welcome in. So there's really nothing better than trying out examples when you're studying circuits. So here is one example. It's an introductory example, but it will probably challenge you enough to be able to see, you know, how do you actually solve for voltage drops over, for example, resistors as you have it in this case, and then how to find out what the currents are in all the different branches that we have in here. Okay, so I wanna be able to combine kind of two things, which is Kirchhoff's laws. So I'll put up a link up above there where I go in quite a bit of detail, okay, about that. And then with Kirchhoff's laws, you also can utilize, especially when you're talking about resistors, uh, Ohm's law, right? So Ohm's law just simply says that the voltage is equal to the current times the resistance or the resistance times the current. So I can put up a link up above there to Ohm's law if you need a refresher. So let's dive in, let's break down this example in full. All right, so we wanna be able to find everything. Okay, so we wanna be able to find what the current is, so what all of the current is in all of the different branches. Okay, so within here, so what is that? <clears throat> we wanna be able to find all the voltage drops. Okay, so across all of these devices. Okay, so that's what exactly what we wanna be able to do. And I'm going to be utilizing uh, Kirchhoff's laws just so that you can see how you can use them to help you. All right, so the first thing that I typically will do, we have to set out certain conventions. So for example, if it's voltages, you can, uh, again, you, you just make an assumption. So I'm gonna make the assumption that the voltage drop is gonna be from positive to negative. That way, I'm gonna make the assumption that I have that drop over here, this drop over here. So the other ones are actually given to us. They're just basically batteries. So we know what those voltages are. Um, and then we can label these throughout in here. So let me label this one as V1. Let me label this one as V2. And let me label this one as V3. Uh, okay, so in that particular order, all right? The next item that I'm going to uh, write out in here, so again, so I'll make uh, assumptions. So I'll just write out all of the currents. So I have a current that is gonna be flowing in here right? Um, I'm going to have a current which is going to go down into here and I'm going to probably have a current going into this direction. But since I made this positive, okay, so I'll just assume that the current is going in this direction. Now, when I do that, so I'm going to write out, so let's call this current I1. Let's call this particular current I2. Now, I made this, you know, positive over here, um, but I guess it doesn't really matter. Okay, so I'm gonna make this current I number three is that it's going in that direction. Now, oftentimes students will wonder, you know, when I make these assumptions with the currents, like what if I'm wrong? Like how do I know it's flowing in that direction? You don't. Um, I mean, I can kind of tell what's going to happen here. So it looks like a current I1 is not gonna flow in that direction. It's probably gonna flow in the other direction. And then the other current I3 is probably gonna flow in the other direction. But um, it's a good, kind of assumption that you can make. And if you're wrong, then when you find the current, it's just gonna give you a negative value. So the negative value just means that the current is actually flowing in the opposite direction. Okay, so that's going to be a good test. So let's dive into this. So first of all, I'm going to use KVL, so meaning Kirchhoff's voltage laws, um, to find out my loops. So I'm going to just make an assumption. Okay, so I'll make this particular path K or loop all the way around. And we know by Kirchhoff's voltage laws that the actual um, voltage all the way around, the, the, the drops themselves are gonna be equal to zero, right? So this is what I'm gonna write. So I'm gonna just say, okay, so V1, which is my first voltage plus my V2. And notice that the way that I have assumed, which is the flow, which is in this direction, so the path is in this direction, it actually goes into the negative, so that means this is gonna be negative five equals to zero. So that's my first one. Now I'm gonna do uh, my second one, all right? So I'm gonna do here, so here's my other KVL right there. So this is going to be V3 plus 15 minus V2 is equal to zero, all right? So that's all of these. So I'm gonna go through here, through here, and through here. So that's this one. Now I can, of course, rearrange this, right? So I can swap it any way I like, but I'll leave it for just a moment. The next one that I will do is, I'm actually going to 
do one, which is going to go all the way around. Now, I might not need this at all. Okay, so this is the path. Okay, so this is this path right there. Okay, so as I'm going all the way through, so that's that path. I'm going to do the voltages all the way around that closed loop. And that particular uh, closed loop is going to give me the following. So it's going to give me V1 plus V3 plus 15 minus 5 is equal to 0. All right, so I have all of these right there. Now, from here, once you have your KVL, you can certainly now go ahead and try to do the KCL, which means the current, right? So the actual current laws, okay, so within here. Now, I really have just one node in here, so that node is going to be right there where the currents are actually branching off. And what it gives me, so this is going to be utilizing KCL um, right there. So that particular KCL that I have, okay, is going to be, so I have um, I1 going in, um, I have both I2 and I3 coming out, so those, those are going to be negative. Okay, so the way that it is written, and it is equal to zero, all right? So coming in is positive, coming out is negative. So that's my KCL, and really that's the only one that I have. Um, you know, I can certainly do this node as well in here, where I have the I2, I3 coming in, and then I1 would have been coming out, but that would have been yielding me exactly the same equation, which is this one, right? Just the signs would have changed, but if you multiplied by negative one, it would have given you the same thing. So I'm not going to do that node. Okay, now that you have this, okay, so, you know, where do you go from here? So technically, what I like to do is when I'm trying to solve, because I'm going to try to solve for all of this, um, I now kind of shift over to Ohm's law, right? Now, what does Ohm's law say? Well, Ohm's law tells me that the voltage, okay, across any resistor is basically the current times the resistance itself. Now, why am I going to be using this? Well, because all of these KVLs that I have over here are in terms of voltages. Um, and I have this nice relationship right here that relates back my actual currents. So, for example, notice that I1 is going to be equal to I2 plus I3, the way that it has been written. So I've just rearranged this. So what I'm going to do now is the following. So I'm going to take this whole thing um, and I'm going to rearrange. So V1 is nothing else, notice, but the resistance, which is 20 ohms, times the current that goes through it, and that is I1. Okay, so that is the first one right there. Plus, now V2 is going to be now 100, because that's the resistance, times I2, which goes through it. And then that 5, I'm going to just shift over on the other side. So here's my equation now. It's only in terms of I1 and I2 okay, that I have in there. Here's the next one. So now I have V3 and then I have um, V2 in there as well. Now notice V3, the way that it is written, is nothing else but 50 times I3. Um, that 15 I'm going to switch over on the other side. So it's going to become negative 15 all the way over there. And then... The other one, which is V2, so it's going to be minus V2, which is 100 times, and this is going to be I2, all right? Now, so those, those are two kind of equations that I have in there. Now, notice what I have, and actually I won't really need the third one in here, but notice what I have in here. So now what I'm trying to see is I have this equation, so I1 and I2, this one is in terms of I2 and I3 right there. Now, I can, if you kind of recall, so systems of linear, so linear systems of equations where you can solve. Um, I have actually three unknowns here, right? I1, I2, and I3. If I could make this in terms of just two unknowns, then I would have been able to solve. This is like solving for X and for Y, when you have two lines, right? And how do those two lines intersect? So you want to be able to do that. So you're going to be using, you know, systems of linear equations, okay? Now, here's a deja vu. This is going to date you back probably to grade 10, maybe even grade 9, depending how quickly you have done it. But it is a math component, right? Okay, so what I am noticing here is 
um, I'm going to use this and I'm going to actually substitute it okay, back into this equation. And now I'm going to only going to have it in terms of I2 and I3, which the other equation is in terms of, right? So this is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to take my equation. So let me take this, this one right here. I'm going to duplicate it. I don't need that third one, actually, at least not for the moment. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to substitute it in there. So I have 20 I2 plus I3. Uh, plus 100 I2 is equal to 5. So now this is going to be 20 I2 plus 20 I3 plus 100 I2 is equal to 5. Now let's rearrange this. So this is going to be 120 I2. I'm just collecting like terms, which are these two, plus 20 I3, which is equal to 5. And now I'm going to take this right there. And I'm going to write it out, except I'm going to switch the I2s and the I3. So what I will have, okay, so is negative 100 I2. Okay, so notice that's what I have there. And then plus, this is going to be 50 I3 uh, equals to negative 15. All right. So now I only have it in terms of I2 and I3. And... I can certainly, you know, start now utilizing, okay, and solving for the for an unknown. I have a system of two unknowns, two equations, they're both linear, so I can go ahead and solve this, right? So this is like the same thing, you know, if you were thinking of, you know, if this was an X right here, this was a Y, if this was an X and this was a Y, and somebody asked you, okay, so solve for X and Y. So this is exactly the same process. All right. So I'm going to do that. Okay. So right now, and you know, which one do I want to get rid of? Well, they're both kind of ugly. Okay. So within here, um, so it certainly won't help me, but okay. So what I notice is I'm going to try to get rid of maybe I2. So let me uh, multiply this. So if I multiply this by 1.2, so that entire equation, so it's going to give me uh, negative 120 I2 plus now 50. So you can take this out. So 50 times 1.2 is going to be 60, right? So this is now I3 is equal to uh, negative, And then this is going to be 15 times 1.2, which is 18. All right. Now, why did I do that? Because I want to be able to get rid of um, this Okay, I2. So I'm just basically solving. So let me duplicate this back in here. Let me put it right there. So now I have my two equations in here. So let me separate this out. And now I can add these together. So this and this is going to cancel. And we're going to get, so on the other side is 80 I3 uh, plus, and this is going to be what? Negative 13. So that means that I3 is equal to negative 13 over 80. Now, 13 is a prime number, so I can't really reduce this. So what does this mean? What have we found? Well, so this is in terms of amps. So we have found the current. Now, you can certainly, you know, I'll leave it the way that it is. But, you know, you can take this, you can divide it by that, and then you'll know that this is 0 0.1625 uh, in terms of a decimal. So that's what the current would be. Notice it's negative. And that negative just means that we've made a mistake, right? Where we just assume that this is going to be flowing in this direction. Okay, the negative means it's actually flowing in this direction, right? So that's what we have right there. So I have found I3. All right, so that's the first thing. Now, once I have found this, I can certainly substitute into any uh, of the above to try to find out what the answer to um, I2 is. So I can take I3 and I can substitute it, for example, into this equation and I'll solve for I2. So let me do that in fast forward fashion. All right, so here's the I2. So I just kind of move these around. So again, I'm not really, you can certainly put it as a decimal. I'll just leave it as a fraction. So if your teachers want it as a decimal rounded, you can certainly do that. Just maybe don't round it until you find all your answers. So here it is. So that is my I2. Notice it's positive, so that means we made the correct assumption. 
So that means that I2 is actually flowing in this direction. So if it was negative, it was flowing in the other direction. So that's what we have there. Now that I have found these two, I can certainly find uh, I1. Now I1 is very easy because once I have these, so I'm going to you know, copy this. So I1 is just the summation of those two because of KCL, so Kirchhoff's current laws. So I can take these two values and I can add it up, okay, right there, and then find I1. So let me do that. All right, so there you have it. So that's I1, uh, and notice it's negative. So again, so that means we made the wrong assumption. So we assumed that it was flowing in this direction. Negative means it's actually flowing into this direction. So it's like it's charging up this battery in here. So that's what we would have, okay, for these three currents. Now, once you have all the currents, you of course can find out all the voltage drops, right, across all of these. So, you know, let me just take one of them, for example, um, and then you can find out the other two, okay? So what you have in there. So let's take, well, let's take actually maybe two of them. We'll take a positive and a negative just so that you know what to do. So very easy. If you take and you wanna find out V2, it's going to be whatever the resistance is times the current, right? Which is I2. Now, I2 is right there, okay? Which is 11 over 160 and that's 100. Okay, so my V2, so for example, if you wanted to find out V2, it's going to be 100 multiplied by 11, 160. Okay, and you know, we can find out what that answer is. So there is your answer now again. So if you, you know, want it in terms of voltages and decimals, you can certainly turn it back in. It is in volts, right? So that's what this means. Now the other one, so I'll do just one more, which is the maybe the negative one. So don't get thrown off, right? So for instance, for V1, um, because of the fact that you had 20 and then times whatever the current was, okay? So this is 20, which is 20 ohms, times whatever the current is, which is going to be negative three over 32. So you're gonna get a negative value and negative value just means that it's not actually from positive to negative that way. It's the drop is in the opposite direction, right? So that's all that it would mean. Okay, in that particular case. So, you know, for this answer we have, so that's your answer. And then you can do the same thing for V3. Again, it will be negative, uh, which just means that the voltage drop is acro across the other ones. So for instance, this negative 15 over eight, so what it means, so if I would clean this up a little bit, Okay, so the negative, because we're assuming, so it's actually, you know, if you made, so this is, Okay, the positive and the negative, so it's 15 over eight in this direction, okay? And of course, if you're going, because we assumed originally from here to here, then it would be negative, right? So as you're going in that direction. So there you have it. So that's kind of a very neat way of being able to have an example and then work through it. Now you might say, wow, it's a lot of work. You know, I have to know how to do this. Yes, this is why you are learning all of that stuff in in math because it is applicable and in circuits you know we got lucky here because you know we could have just simply we substituted back in and we had two equations two unknowns and then we could find out but as you can see you might have three equations three unknowns and then it's going to be a little bit more more of a headache um, and typically three by threes you don't really study until you maybe kind of get into grade 12. So, you know, for introductory physics, grade 11 courses, this is probably as complicated as your teachers will make it for you. Um, and also they don't want to do it so that it takes way too much time. As you can see this video, okay, you know, is a pretty lengthy video for just one example, but I wanted to go through every single detail on how to set up, set up a KVL and a KCL, right? The actual path and then use Ohm's law to help us. Okay. All right. So I hope that you found this useful, you know, happy studying. Welcome to circuits. Uh, you know, it's a lot of fun. Electricity and magnetism is, is super interesting. These are all, of course, theoretical, because if you start to substitute these in real life, um, you know, we make huge assumptions when we do theory, like temperature doesn't really change or stays more or less the same, which is definitely not true, especially when you start to screw up your circuits. Um, but Okay, it's a pretty neat and a very good approximation when you're just learning about these, okay, and these concepts.
All right, thanks for watching. See you in future videos. Bye, everybody.